If you guys are subscribed to my channel, you'll know that I recently put out a video explaining how to slice your files in Prusa Slicer and interface directly with OctoPrint. And with one or two clicks, you can pretty much just start your print right away, right from Prusa Slicer, and you don't even have to access the OctoPrint interface. This greatly improves the workflow of your 3D printing environment. It makes things fast and convenient and easy. But that video that I released was specifically geared towards enabling this process on the Creality CR10 Smart Printer because there were a few extra steps on that specific printer. Now, most printers, it's pretty much just a software thing and I'm gonna take you guys through that today in this video and it's just gonna be a more generic video explaining how to do this process on pretty much any printer. So let's get started. In order to wirelessly communicate with your 3D printer using OctoPi, you're gonna to need to get a Raspberry Pi board, as the name might suggest, and download the imaging tool from their website. And so this is the tool here where you can simply choose your operating system. In this case, we're gonna be choosing the OctoPi operating system. We're also gonna be choosing that SD card that we have plugged into the computer at this point. And I would go with at minimum an eight gig SD card for this task. You're gonna to wanna to hit Control Shift X and that's gonna bring up some extra options here where you can set things like the SSID and password for your Wi-Fi settings and that's gonna burn it right to the image directly so you don't have to do any extra fiddling around. And as soon as you plug that Raspberry Pi in and turn the power on, it should fire up and connect directly to your Wi-Fi network. Like I said, you won't have to SSH into the Pi or do any sort of uh, fancy editing in notepad or anything like that anymore, they made it super easy. And you're just gonna hit write. This error or notification or whatever might come up just because it's uh, essentially reformatting that SD card so your computer's not gonna recognize it anymore. And once it's done, it's gonna come up and say that it's done. Then you can unplug that SD card, plug it into your Raspberry Pi board right at the bottom. Then you can apply power to the board using the USB-C cable. And then you can just plug your printer directly into the Raspberry Pi. Turn your printer on. And in some cases you might notice that before the printer even, uh, the switch even comes on, your LCD screen might light up because it might be being powered from the Raspberry Pi. But then we can get into the OctoPrint settings because it should now be connected to your home network. Now, in order to connect to OctoPrint or OctoPi through your browser, you are gonna to need to know its IP address, and there's a few ways of doing this. The easiest way that I find is to just log right directly into your router and go to your device list and look for the Raspberry Pi or OctoPi, and it'll tell you the IP address of that device. You can enter that IP address into the browser window in the address bar as seen on my screen here. And then the setup wizard will come up because it's the first time that we're running OctoPrint on this particular device. It's gonna ask you to go through a series of uh, setup options here, such as creating a username and password for access control, things like connectivity checks, and all that sort of thing. You can pretty much just choose all of the default settings unless you are a more advanced user and there is something, of course, that you want to change. Otherwise, all of the default settings are usually sufficient. It's also gonna ask you to name the printer and select the generic model that it's based on. So you can just leave it at RepRap. And it's gonna ask you some basic information about your printer, like the shape of the bed, where you want the origin set up, the width, depth, and height of the build volume, and if your nozzle homes off of the print bed. So you can set up a custom bounding box there if you so wish. In the axis tab, you can set up some of the machine limits uh, that you can use here in OctoPrint. And the last thing that you can set up is the hot end and extruders. So the nozzle diameter and the number of extruders. So in this case, for my CR10 Smart, it's just a 0.4 nozzle and one uh, extruder. And we can finish that up and you can apply any updates if your system detects that your OctoPrint needs to be updated. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this update. It'll automatically reboot after that. And we'll come back into the uh, interface here for OctoPrint and we can connect to our printer. When connecting to the printer, if you know the serial baud rate, you can select it. If not, you can leave it on auto. Just hit connect and that should be it. As long as everything is set up correctly, you should now be successfully connected to your printer. 
and you can go ahead and look at the terminal window to make sure that information is being passed back and forth between the two. You can type in that M503 command again and double check that everything looks good when the uh, firmware information comes through. You can look at the control window and see if you have a camera, let's say hooked up to your Raspberry Pi, you should be able to see that webcam stream load and you can test things out like turn on your heated bed or nozzle and make sure everything's working correctly. Getting Prusa Slicer to interface directly with Octoprint such that you can upload G-code directly from Prusa Slicer into Octoprint and print immediately is actually very easy. So assuming that you've already created a printer profile in Prusa Slicer for your printer, click the little gear icon right beside the printer name up there and this window is going to pop up where you can browse for your IP address associated with your Octoprint or you can type it in manually. You're gonna need an API key from Octoprint. So open up the Octoprint window, go to your user settings. You can click on application keys or just scroll down to the bottom, click that little refresh looking button that's gonna generate a key. You can copy it directly out of this window, go back into Prusa Slicer. And then in that API key field, you can just paste that directly in there, hit okay, and that's it. You're pretty much set up. So if you go back to your build plate, and you slice up a file. Once you're done slicing, in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a little icon that you can click on and that is gonna ask you to name the file. So that's what's gonna get uploaded directly into Octoprint. And there's a little checkbox there to start the print immediately if you so wish. And then you hit that and you're pretty much ready to go. So you can head on over to your printer and make sure everything is working and your print starts. Not surprisingly, it works and the print starts. And this whole setup makes slicing and printing so convenient. After that print was done, I moved my printer into a more permanent location inside of a custom cabinet I built. I have a video on that. I'll put that link in the top right hand corner of the screen. And I also moved the Raspberry Pi into this nice looking case that I also made specifically for these Octoprint applications. And I'll put that link to that video in the top right hand corner of the screen as well if you guys are interested in making one of those. So that's it for this video. I hope it was easy enough for you guys to follow along. I think it's a surprisingly simple enough process to achieve, and it really improves the workflow for your 3D printing environment. And Octoprint and Prusa Slicer, in my opinion, are two very powerful softwares that are still user-friendly enough to use, and I've been using them now for years, and I highly recommend that you guys check them out if you're just sort of browsing this video and put them into use in your 3D printing environment. So thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in another video.